the 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 term I have a choice or the saying I have a choice is very key because um we do have a choice. Uh I remember when when my I remember it's a couple of things like I think spirituality is a choice. I choose to believe in Jesus Christ. Um one because I don't know nothing else. But two, I've lived on that whole I thought about Islam once. Um, and I was like, nah, I just, you know, to be honest, to be completely honest, my wife is a devout Christian and I I didn't grow up super spiritual. We went to church, uh, in third ward whenever my mom was off, but my wife grew up in the church and I wanted to be with her. So if she, and this is where I give up control. If she was a devout Christian then I'm going to be a devout Christian because I want to be next to her. But, um, you know, things that, are, and for me, I, I live, I, I have lived uh, uh, an okay life. I fought coming up. I went to school across town. I didn't see my share of trauma. Um, but, you know, when my son passed and my father was telling me, don't question God, I almost wanted to say to my father, I almost want to disrespect my father for that. You know what I'm saying? You're not you're not here. And I understand, you know, sometimes you can play you can play um like you know what somebody's going through just as a as empathy or being sympathetic to their situation, but if you're not this is something my man told me. If you're not in it, you have no idea. So, you know, I chose then like my father said, don't turn your back on God because I had some questions myself, like why us? Some really crazy things in my mind, like, yo, I'm finna do this and I'm finna go up to the hospital and I'm really finna John Q this thing. Mm. I'm a John Q it. Mm. Um, so, and a lot of, and two, sometimes for me, I'm a very simple person. You know, when people get to talking and they've been enlightened, I kind of like, I don't I can't follow because I haven't researched like people have researched and some of me doesn't want to research. You know, I want to I want a simple life. I, it, You know, faith is for me. I found that faith is just choosing to believe. Mm-hmm. And I parallel my faith into what I do as an artist. I believe mm-hmm. and it will transform into something else. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, when people spew what they spew because they've overread or they're trying to um they're trying to sound as strong in what they believe in so that you can't shake them. Yeah, sometimes those conversations kind of like, eh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I my 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 responses cut short. Yeah. Right, right, right. And then you look down at your phone <laughs> and you well, get you know, distracted. For me, um the interesting thing about moving away from the church is I've found that in my experience, Christians have the desire to proselytize, to convert. I don't to know get what everybody. that, what does that word mean? That means you need to believe in Jesus. You're oh, okay. going to hell gotcha. if you don't believe in Jesus. Gotcha. I don't have any desire to convert anybody to anything about anything. My, my goal is for each person to become everything they can be. If that means you believe in Jesus, fine. If you believe in Buddha, fine. If you believe in Confucius, fine. If you believe in, I don't even know what else is out there, universal laws like I do, fine. I could care less. You know, it has nothing to do with me. I want every person to seize control of his or her life and to find the truth that resonates with him that person because to me as again i said if it's true it's true it's true it's true it's true universally it's true you know in the bible i'll quote the bible lots of times you'll hear me quote the bible on my podcast because there's truth in the bible Mm -hmm. and there's also some stuff that i think some people stuck in there you know um because it doesn't resonate as true but i i definitely embrace the truth in the bible you know absolutely a hundred percent you know without reservation um so you know for me control right 
I, there came a point in my life after I got divorced, when I hit my forties, when I was like, I've lived my life the way I was told to live my life. I've been a good little girl. I've been a good little Christian, I've been a good little wife. I've been this. Now I'm putting aside all of that. And now I'm saying, this is my life. And I only have one life to live. And I am going to search for things that resonate with me. If it resonates with me, if it makes me a better person, a better wife, better mother, better friend, better whatever, teacher, then I'm going to adopt it. If it doesn't, I'm going to chunk it. And I'm going to keep moving through my life, cleaning out my mental closets until every single thing in me, head, heart, body, until it all is absolutely true for me, is absolutely positive and beneficial for me. And whatever gets chunked along the way, I don't care if it's tradition, if it's something my grandmother taught me, my mother, my father, I don't care because it doesn't work. And at the end of the day, to me, all that matters is does it work? Does it produce the benefit that I need in my life? If it doesn't produce, then I don't need it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that is the standard, as they say, the litmus test that I have decided when it came to controlling myself, it either works or it doesn't. It either produces or it doesn't. It's that simple. You know, you talk about being a simple man. It's that simple. And going to church for me, for me, it didn't produce. Mm. I have grown more in the last four years since I stopped going to church than I ever grew in the time from 15 to, what was I, 46? Mm. In 31 years of being in a building, I've grown more in the last four years. It didn't produce for me. It may produce for somebody else. Right. Didn't produce for me. All right. <laughs> Don't need it. All right. Now I've gone a lot, I've been to a seminars, I've been to conferences, I've been through initiation, I've been through a lot of things in the last four years that produced for me. Okay. And I'm still doing, you know, things, reading books and, and meeting people and journaling and meditation, all this stuff, you know, creating a Zenergize Your Life workbook, mm. that stuff produced for me. So for me, control is, is, is key because when you decide you have the right to take control of your life at whatever age you are and live your life according to the principles that make sense to you, that's a powerful moment. And realize that you're going to die one day. And, and as I said, and I will say it again, when I die, when I, when I lay down on that deathbed and my sons and my grandkids are all around that deathbed, I want to look at every one of them and say, smile babies, because I did everything right. i like i got a legacy right i got you guys and i got all of this that i produced and there's nothing else i wanted to do i did it all right i did everything that was in my heart i gave to people i loved on people i told people the truth i showed them how grateful i was i did it all i want that's what i want when i lay down on that deathbed that's control to me control of my destiny knowing that when I lay down on that deathbed there is nothing I left undone nothing I left unsaid it's all been done it's all been said I did the best that I could I wasn't perfect but I definitely did the best that I could right and that's that's what I want and that was when I was when I got divorced at six years ago and I realized that besides my wonderful children that I had and my degrees and my job that I had awards on, there wasn't a whole lot that I was proud of because mm. everything else I did for everybody else, I didn't do it for me. I wasn't proud of it. Other people would look at my life and say, oh, she's done. And I was looking at my life and saying, this is, this is crap. I could have done more. I should have done more. I didn't mm. wasted 43 years of my life besides my children. Besides the students I impacted, besides that, I got nothing to show. Mm. And when I, when I looked at my life like that, I was like, this is freaking pathetic. Mm. Get your shit together, <laughs> you know? Right. And that was, a di that was a whole different mindset for me, a different, I was like, from that point on to this point, it's like every single day I'm producing, every single day I'm producing. I don't have time. 
Because right. I wasted 43 years of my life. Well, I, I, I won't say I wasted, you know. <laughs> I, I, that's harsh. I did not properly use right. the time that I had for the gifts that I was given. Right. You know, so. Yeah, life is short, man. Uh, yeah. It is short. I've come to find that out. It's short. Yeah. You don't live forever, so you need to control what you can control and let the rest go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that I you know that I have found out is true. There's people hurting right now, literally, because yeah. you know they can't uh, control the outcome that they've been given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you know, it. I don't get that deep. I don't. I'm just you know. I don't. <laughs> I don't get that deep. You know, I, I've heard people say they download, they have to download their minds. Listen, when I lay down, I don't lay down until I absolutely have to. Mm-hmm. Because I know that when I crash, it's over. You can't call me and get me. I will I will crash and the building will be burning. And it will be, it, it'll be by the grace of God that I wake up. Because I probably, if I go to sleep, I'm probably, I'm not, I'm done. Until my body wakes me up. So... I just pray that I, it's no electrical fire where I am because I, I'm probably not going to make it. But by then, you know, I hope that I've, uh, I hope that I've um, served my purpose. Gotcha. Well, I think we have covered a lot, uh, talked about a whole lot of different things, and and I have enjoyed this conversation. Um, is there anything else you want to say about control before we kind of wrap this up? Uh, you know, it'll probably hit me when I'm on the way home. But, you know, I just it's just who I am. I, I don't know how to be anything else. I don't know where I'd be if I if I didn't, you know, say or have the idea of maybe I can do that myself. I don't know where I'd be. So, you know, I'm grateful for my journey. And, you know, I just continue to to take on whatever it brings, you know, so. You know, I probably have a lot more to say when I get home, but I, right now I'm just like, yeah, I, you know, I am. Um, you're always a, um, you're always a light Thank when you. you speak. So you know, I'm just appreciative of the opportunity. Well, um, I I'm glad that you came on, and and it was. Uh very interesting to sit down with a Virgo and talk about <laughs> control. <laughs> I know people out in, in, in Facebook and well, we're not doing a lot people out with when this goes on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn, they're going to be like two Virgos talking about control. Oh my gosh. You see how passionate they are talking yeah. about control. See, I told you them Virgos was controlling. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we're going to come to the end of the podcast. I do have some merch that you guys can see on the video. I have some different shirt designs. This is actually only like five of the shirt designs I have. I actually have 14 different designs on my uh, Teespring website, which is laughsandlyricsmerch.com. I have some new inspirational bookmarks that are a dollar each. They are so cute. You know, they have all kinds of sayings on them and you open them up you know, like this to put them on, you know, your page. So you can get those for a dollar each. I have my Zenergize Your Life goal setting package, which is 15. You see how it's nice and compact, comes in a little resealable bag. So this has 16 different pages of concepts, journal prompts, meditations, uh, places where you can put pictures of people who inspire you. You can write down books, song titles, movie titles, you know, all kinds of things. This comes with a journal, stickers, comes with a bookmark. Um, and there's actually tabs in here so you can tab the journal. So I'll show you guys my first page that I did. This was, I did a Facebook live on this the other day. You can see my first page that I did on abundance, you know, so it's filled in and you got Langston Hughes there and Oprah Winfrey that symbolize abundance to me. And I tabbed my journal, you know, wrote in my journal on abundance and wrote about Langston Hughes and, Oprah Winfrey. So this was all the stuff that I wrote on that first. Uh, and I went and tabbed the second. This is access. I left a couple of pages for more writing on abundance. 
And so I wrote all of this about access, which is the second topic. So, so I actually do live what I, you know, yeah. talk about. This is my life and I'm sharing with people kind of how I, I just talked to you guys and I was very open and honest about the fact that I feel like I spent the first 43 years of my life living for other people. And people say, how did you get to here where you have such a self-actualized life? I got to here through actually deciding what was really important to me and, and boiling that down to very specific principles that I wanted to live my life on. And uh, some of it's universal laws and some of it's these words that you see in this, this Zenergize Your Life workbook. So you want to get more self-actualization? I can show you how. $15. And you can build a life that really is the life of your dreams, the life of your goals, a life that makes you feel alive, you know. And it's interesting that we would say, I feel alive. Because some people don't feel alive. Some mm. people feel like they're just walking through life, sleeping through life, you know, existing. Mm. And I, I have been that person. I know what that feels like to feel like, oh, God, I woke up again. I got to go to work again. <laughs> I got to deal with this stuff again. <laughs> and there's nothing that you're looking forward to because you just know it's going to keep being the same thing week in, week out, day in, day out. That's a horrible way to live. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can actually take control of your life and you can actually change it no matter where you are, how old you are, what gender you are, what race you are, what religion you are. You can actually control your life and, and, and make it something better. And that's that's what Zenergy is all about. It really is all about. That's like the whole the whole idea behind Zenergy is that urge for more fulfillment. And how do you get there one week at a time? one tool at a time, putting it into place and moving forward. It's, it's incremental. It doesn't happen overnight. I'm not saying it happens overnight. It's one week at a time, one day at a time, one tool at a time, and you build a completely different life. And so I'm here to help you. John Ross is here to work with creatives too, talking about his creative journey. So check him out. Tell him again where they can find you. Um, uh, my social media handles John Ross Dyke on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, still underscore visionary Instagram and Twitter, and the What's Next Pod underscore on IG, and still visionary dot com, Facebook John Ross Dyke the first. So. Awesome! So I hope you enjoyed our conversations. I am Zenashe. You can find me on Instagram Zenashe Poetry Zenergy Z E N N U R G Y Zenergy is on all podcast streaming platforms. You can find me on Facebook Zenashe Zenashe Poetry Zenergy A Hundred Thousand Poets for Change Awaken Verses. Those are all my pages. You can find my website laughsandlyrics.com or laughsandlyricsmerch.com, and all of that will be in the video. All those links will be in the video. Uh, if you want to be a guest on this energy show, you want to talk about some of these principles we have coming up, you can definitely hit my website, sign up on the Google form and come in and talk about your journey. And thank you for joining us. May you walk in Zenergy. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. You do what you do for yourself to prove you can do it for others. Even though the year of perfect vision needed corrective lenses, your vision was never out of focus. You remain still. You remain determined. Kobe said, The Mamba mentality is the attention to detail and the level of commitment. Run your race, because you got time. Keep the momentum. Believe in your story, a creative story. Remember, never stay comfortable while trusting the process. Be innovative in your 720 hours. There will be stumbling blocks. You just keep pushing. Most importantly, what's next? Continue to drop. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday.